In this presentation, we will take a look at bank feeds and how to set up rules within QuickBooks Online. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here is our sample data. We're currently in the banking section. If we select this little hamburger, we're going to close this window to see as much of the screen as possible. So we have that. We can also select this icon down here to see as much of the screen as possible. And so, uh, so remember, this look may look different. We minimize this screen and we minimize that screen. So we have our information that we have downloaded from the bank. It's currently in the For uh, Review tab. And we've gone through here. We've seen how we can add this information so that it will actually be included in QuickBooks, including adding data, matching data, how the data will line up if we have entered data in the past and uh, how, how QuickBooks can see that and match that information up so that we don't have the duplicate information. What we want to do now is take a look about setting up rules. How can we set up some rules in order for the uh, system to see things better? In other words, for example, if QuickBooks doesn't know which category to put some information to or if we have some, some data that's very similar, like we have the same name that pops up on uh, the account, like to a store that's the same. Let's say we go to the same store, but perhaps one store we only go to one location that's going to be for business and one location that's non-business. Or two names are very similar, and therefore QuickBooks keeps categorizing in them in the same place, and we want to tell QuickBooks to, uh, to categorize them to different expense accounts. That's when we can set up rules and that'll help us to really uh, modify things and make things much faster over time. So once we notice these types of things happening, once we notice, hey, there's these two amounts, they're, they're, you know, they're different by this one thing, this one item in the description or this one location, and I can't then separate them based on what QuickBooks is seeing. QuickBooks is, is trying to allocate the expense account just based on the name and possibly not a store number, possibly not location or some other factor that we can see that QuickBooks isn't taking into account. So then we can say, okay, well, now I'm going to set up a rule so that QuickBooks can differentiate between these types of items, for example. So in order to do that, we're going to go to the Rules tab up top. So we're, we're up top in Banking. We're going to say, okay, we want to set up a bank rule. And if we set up a bank rule, we can set up a rule w which would look something like this. We're going to set up a new rule. And we can name the rule, uh, whatever the rule will will be based in, and then we're going to say that, um, and I'm going to I'm going to base it on some numbers that are going to be in a description of a name. So I'm going to say if you see these numbers within the description, then I, we want you to put it to this particular bank account or this particular expense account because these numbers represent uh, are representative of some item that we want to be allocated to this expense account. So that's going to be the differentiating factor. So we're going to say in this case it's either money in or money out. Money out is typically the case because we're often talking about uh, expenses. Expenses there being more transactions typically that are expense type transactions although we hope the deposits of the money in is greater in dollar amount. And we could choose the account either just one account or all the accounts. If this, if this rule applies only to the checking account for example then we might just want to choose a checking account by selecting these items. Uh, when a transaction meets the rule. So we can set up these rules now. These are going to be um, any rules or all rules, right? We can set up multiple different rules here. And we can say uh, it has to meet either this or this rule in order to do this, if we want to get a bit more complex on the rules. Or we can say that uh, it, if it meets any one, either of these rules. I'm going to say both of these rules. So, and we're going to say the the bank account contains, so I'm going to say uh, the bank text, again, description or amount, I'm going to say text, and, and oftentimes it could be an amount too. We, we might note, like, you might have one, one vendor that has, you know, $100 and then uh, $120 every month that uh, is taken from this for two different reasons. And you might say, well, the $120 one from this particular vendor goes to this expense account and the $100 one from this particular vendor goes to another account, for example. So you may have something like that. We're going to keep it with the text and I'm going to say either it contains, doesn't contain, or exactly. I'm going to say uh, it contains 
and I'm going to say one, uh, the, the name of the text, I'll say Verizon. So we're going to say Verizon. And then I'm actually going to add another one and say we're going to add another text. Same thing. So it has bank text, contains, but this time I'm going to give it a number, say like an account number. This Verizon with this number that happens to be on the bank statement. Every time I see the bank statement, it's got this number. I want it to go possibly someplace different than our, the other bill that's for Verizon. Possibly one's personal and possibly one is, is business or one location or a different location. So then if we have down here set one or more of the following, it's going to be an expense uh, item here. We could say they pay E. I'm going to say Verizon. And then add that. So I'm going to add the pay E. And then the category, I'm going to say this one goes to draws. So I'm going to say this isn't an expense. This is possibly something personal. It's not going to go to the telephone expense. Maybe this one's going to go somewhere else possibly. So if you see that particular one, uh, we'll take it to draws and the draws will be an equity account. So I've got draw equity, uh, detail type equity and save and close. So something like that. And we might have an, another one with a different number that's going to be our, uh, expense account for the telephone. So we can see how we can set up these rules and we can kind of refine down what's going to actually happen. And then when we go to our banking feed over here, if we go back to the banking, uh, it should be able to take that rule and apply it out. So when it sees an account in the description, a lot, oftentimes we have a long description from the bank and oftentimes we have numbers in it or something like that. We can say, okay, this draws account should go to the, to, I mean, this telephone from Verizon should go to the draws, whereas this telephone uh, from a different account should go to telephone expense. Um, and we could see how that can apply in multiple different areas. And once you once you start to go through this data, you'll start to note from month to month, you'll start to say, hmm, I have to recategorize this particular thing every time because QuickBooks doesn't know where to go. It, or it, no, it always memorizes to go to one place, whereas there's actually two different places. And you can say, well, why is QuickBooks doing that? Is there any kind of differentiating factor like the dollar amount uh, that, uh, or, or something within the description that we can use to tell QuickBooks, hey, I'd like you to, to take these to two different expense accounts if there is, then it's most likely that you can go to this the bank rules tab and create um, a rule that will allow QuickBooks to do that automatically, which can save a lot of time in the future. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.